Welcome to Stories of Briscoe and Bradshaw. I will be Bradshaw. That will be the WWE Hall of Famer, Oklahoma's favorite son, Mr. Gerald Briscoe. And sometimes in professional wrestling, the fans become the show. And out of those fans, sometimes you get a super fan. That's who we have today. He is known as the sign guy, Mr. Rick Ockberger. And I want to tell you, from personal experience, some of his signs were stupid and not funny. That was the ones about me. Here he is. Rick, welcome to the show. Hey, good to be here. You know, it, it's, it is such an honor to be, uh, you know, talking with a Hall of Famer, uh, someone I truly respect. Uh, Mr. Briscoe, it, it is an honor, sir. And John. Well, thank you, Rick. And man, it's so good to have you on. And John, John. I Wait a minute. Who said it was good to have him on? John, John Rick. Hey, John, it's my, it's my, this is my part of the segment where you, you throw that our guest. And a guest refers to me as usual and thanks me for being a nice guy and, and you for being here. So it's my turn to, to, to ask Rick. Rick, uh, you know, we're, we're John John requested you that I, I look you up and I get you on here. So, you know, you know, don't shake your head. No, I'm telling you the fact here. <laughs> so we're starting off on a wrong boat already here. Right. I see all your awards back there. Is there an award that you got on your wall that pertains to John Lafeville? That's my big question. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. He gives out awards? Are you yeah, kidding no, me? Yeah, yeah. yeah his, no, fan, uh, his fan club uh, gives them out every year. He's got a fan club? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's him. It's Gerald right? Briscoe and Bruce Richard. They have two people. <laughs> yeah, we got we got two people. We got we got one other person. We know he listens because he bitches about our interviews with guests all the time. That's Bruce Pritchard. He's, he's our only listener. So you're going out to an audience of three: John, yep. myself, John, myself, and Bruce Pritchard. So gotcha. uh, you could you couldn't have three better guys. Oh, uh, you know, listen to this podcast. You know, but that's all you need. And you guys have some solid sponsors, I guess. Coke oh, and oh yeah, and McDonald's yeah. and oh, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Very water, good. Zephyr Hills water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We okay. got, we got, we got it. Uh, and monster. We got, we got them all in monster with some vodka in there. I, I bet. Sure. Burger King. Wow. Burger King, yeah. That's, that's Listen. from King Lawler. King, King Lawler lined that one up for us. Oh, the King. Okay. Yeah. That's good. But, uh, you know, Rick, Rick, you know, you, you said, such an interesting guy, according to John. So I had to find out for myself. Right. But I, okay. I you know, I'm doing a little thing on, on a on a self written uh, bio sheet that I would, could pull up on Wikipedia because Wikipedia said Rick who? Sign oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, I got I got some information on it. Seems that I stumbled upon a little nugget here that that's really good that. You're you're originally from Ohio, which makes you a lot better. Because I always thought you're from Texas, because that's all I ever saw. And you know how Oki thinks about Texans, you know. So right. But when I found out you're from the Buckeye State, wow. So, uh, but anyway, how did a Buckeye State guy <laughs> that was a basketball a college basketball player end up in the middle of a WWE? Uh, uh, ring uh, with, with John's favorite guy. I got to tell you, you're right up there with Tony Timbal with John. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you're, when you're playing basketball, tell us a little bit about basketball, Rick. Oh, my goodness. that That is a long story. And uh, let's hope I keep your uh, viewers and listeners awake. But uh, yeah, growing up in Ohio, pretty much there wasn't a whole lot. I'll to be do. I'll be back in about ten minutes. All right, see you later. Okay, <laughs> bye. Well, we got that one viewer, so we're still good. Uh, you know, growing up in Ohio, wasn't much to do but play basketball. Pretty much, it was in Gahanna, Ohio, a little suburb of Columbus, and uh, you know, my aunt moved to San Antonio, Texas, where she said, "I think Rick could dominate here." I've been a six man in o in Ohio. Moved to Texas, San Antonio. Yeah, I was pretty good. And uh, wound up, got a scholarship with uh, Stephen F. Austin State University. <laughs> Axum Jacks. Uh, I don't like John applied there for football, but he didn't meet the academic standards. Oh, well, that's a shock. And you got in, right, Rick? Oh, sure, sure. Okay. Got that, got scholarship. Uh, not Yeah, not for smarts, that's for sure. But my sophomore year, we were 2-25. and 25. Uh, Not a proud moment. Uh, but as soon as I left, they made the big dance. Who were the two teams you beat? Uh, were they the high school? The blind, or? and I think a cosmetic, uh, like a hairdresser school. So, <laughs> cool, cool. 
Yeah. You so we were next to last in the like nation. Some, Brooklyn was University close? was last, I remember, and then us. So that was that was a while back. But as soon as when I you, left, you yeah. the ladies from the cosmetology school, was it close or was it like in overtime? Okay. Now this is <laughs> our ladies team at Stephen F. Austin was actually ranked uh, in the nation. And there was always the boy, I wonder if the girls team can beat the boys team. And I always heard that mess and stuff, but uh, we could weren't they? very good. Well, could they? Yeah, could yeah, they? Uh, they probably could. <laughs> yeah. If uh, if I was playing, yes, they could. Yeah, they could definitely beat us. So I played bench. But uh, uh, you know, after that, uh, I, I was in radio TV. Uh, I worked at for a couple television stations, some NBC affiliates in Tyler and in uh, Nacogdoches. And uh, left that. There's no money in TV, as John well knows. So uh, started going into sales, and I've always had this a passion for watching wrestling. Uh, even back in the Ohio days, I would watch the TBS Superstation. I'd see, you know, you have the Ric Flair and the, and the Dusty Rhodes and uh, uh, Mr. Wrestling 2 and all these guys, and I just I was fatuated with it. These were larger-than-life superheroes. Just uh, had a fond appreciation of it until I went to a show, and that's where the hook comes in is I loved it. These guys, these guys who I see on TV are actually there. And if I say, hey, you suck, they're going to respond to me. This is <laughs> what's going on. And it even elevates that with, with signs. I'm holding up a sign. They come over, rip it up or dump water on me. It became a drug. It became an obsession. And uh, after, I don't know, 1600 shows, it's, it's still, it, it seems like the first time every time I go to another show. So I don't even know if that answered your question, but there you go. So you, you, you didn't shows. become. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's possibly all WWE, but I do, I have gone to, you know, uh, just a couple TNAs and uh, Impacts and WCW. I actually stole a script uh, when I was sitting front row there. Someone left that out, so I just grabbed it and ran out real quick. Oh, did it fall out of Michael A's pocket? It probably did. <laughs> yeah. Along with a, you know, a little bottle of, uh, Thunderbird. What kind, what kind of script? <laughs> uh, it, was, right, it, was, it was two pages. It was a pamphlet. Right. <laughs> and you open it up and it says, just wing it. So these 1,600 shows, was yeah. WWE giving you tickets or were you paying for it? Pay, paying for it. Loved it. Was was a groupie. Uh, I can tell you as of the, the last few years, though, I've, I've maybe reached out a time or two to say, man, these tickets are expensive. Can you help? You know, because I just want to go. I know a lot of people uh, love to go to the pay-per-views. They love to go to the, the the TV, the Raws, the Smackdowns, what have you. I love the house shows. I love the live events where I guess things are still kind of, you know, do this, 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 but it's, it's more loose. It's more them having fun out there. And if I have a sign or something, they'll come up and say something or or, or interact, and that's what I'm really looking for is that that interaction part of it. So, what is have been you ever best... had any trouble? Have... Go ahead, Ed Don. What has been the best interaction with a sign that you've had with somebody? Oh, maybe, the, maybe the angriest somebody has been besides me, because I <laughs> I hate all your signs about me. <laughs> Man, I mean, oh. the thing is, you go on a loop. You know what a loop is. You know, you're in you're in Austin heard, one day. Yeah, so we've heard. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm following that loop. <laughs> I'm going five shows just like y'all, five or six or whatever it is. And I'm coming up with signs for like you, a different one each night. It's tough to do. So yeah, you saying a lot of the signs are crummy, you're right. Because it's it's hard to come up with different stuff, and is this going to work and this stuff? And after a while, even the the superstars come up and let me know about it. It's like, oh, that's oh, that's good. Oh, that's bad. You know, stuff like that. And I usually get that from the Miz. He always uh, reacts to that. But my to get the biggest uh, meanest interaction would have to be the person who ripped up my very first sign. And this was a raw TV show. And it was the nation of domination. And uh, I think South Park was big at that time. So I had Cartman pulling his pants down and, and farting. And it says the nation of flatulation. And Mark Henry didn't like that. 
So during commercial break, he comes right over, shreds it up, and uh, that's what got me hooked. It was wow. But there was a time at a house show, couldn't tell you what city or where, but uh, I was very professional. I'd carry these uh, leather bounded artwork, you know, you've seen like the, the these briefcases basically, uh, but they're really thin and I guess architects or whoever use them, I use them for my artwork because I am an artist. Uh, I'd bring them into shows and I had one there with 12 signs ready for the show. Mark's match was second. He comes over immediately and shreds the whole briefcase along with the signs. That, I, that feat of strength was incredible. <laughs> and Charles so had, Robinson how, felt wait so a minute. How, how many signs were there? There were like 10 or 12. And he ripped them all up. Yeah, but the case itself was, <laughs> I'm talking leather bound, thick. And he just like shredded up like, I don't know, like, like this little piece of paper. I mean, <laughs> Fly, you know, everything flying everywhere. And Charles Robinson comes over and just picks up a little piece of sign and goes, here you go, man. <laughs> it, it was amazing. So that reaction was pretty incredible. But uh, yeah. Did he rip up the briefcase too or just the signs? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a leather brown briefcase. He shredded it up. Mark Henry ripped up a leather briefcase. Yes, yes, along with all the signs. <laughs> He is the world's strongest man. Don. It's not yeah, the guy yeah. can bend a frying pan. I mean, uh, no, no. We, I saw him one time. Yeah. We were in a, a, like a like a high school dressing room type. You know, had the ch uh, combination locks on. Uh -huh. Arn Anderson had put his bag in there, and somehow the lock the locker closed. And so they were uh -huh. got a crowbar, and they were trying to pull the locker apart to get Arn stuff out. And Ron said, "Wait till Mark gets here." Mark walked in put a towel over the locker, put a towel on top of the locker, and rip that locker off its hinges. Jeez. I mean, you know, he's that's no BS, him being the world's strongest man. It's obviously he won it twice, but the, when we saw that, we literally said, Mark, if we've ever offended you, we apologize right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, never seen anything, I've never seen anything like that in person. So ripping yeah. up the leather is incredibly impressive, but yeah, very, very believable. Oh, goodness. The guy, I mean, I was, I had my doubts. Uh, I, I'd run into him every once in a while, maybe at a hotel, at a restaurant after a show or something like that. Would never smile, would just give me the meanest look. And for, I don't, it had to be decades that I thought, he's going to kill me one of these days. And uh, my God, he doesn't like me. It's such I a shame it was he maybe, didn't. I know. And I think it was like maybe a year ago, he was at like an, a local promotion. And I went up, hey, how you doing, Mark? And it was Nicest, sweetest guy ever. I've met his lovely family, uh, so we're best of friends now. So, thank when, God. When you listening. run into when you when you run into guys like that out, out of the way out of, of the arena, what kind of reaction do you get? Do you get friendly, friendly uh, smile or in them, or in them uh, come up and say, you know, hey, good job tonight or anything? Yeah, like that? yeah, uh, all of them, super friendly. Um, it, you know, even. <laughs> There, there was one time actually uh, going on a loop. Um, I think we were in San Antonio and I believe we were flying to Corpus Christi on a Southwest airline. And well, we, we drew C, you know, in Southwest, which is like the last. But we look over and we see the whole SmackDown roster about to board that plane. And I've been ripping on them the, the night before, just mercifully just crazy and so it's almost like a dream where my friend and i scott were, were on the plane walking down the aisle you know and there's brock lesnar staring at me and that there's eddie guerrero over here and you just name the names the big show couldn't really sit anywhere so he had a front row seat and he's wrestling with his uh you know, seat belt, and they had to get an attachment, and that wouldn't work. So uh, you're you're so telling I, us that Big Show had to get an extension to get around his wrist, Rick. That's yeah. what you're. That's what you're saying, right? Rick correct. Design. Correct. And he was he, sitting next. He's going to kill you. I know. Well, I've already had you know a sign uh, for him last, the other night. It says, you know, Big Show moonlights at Sea World. Uh, I think that was it. And so I'm trying to lay low. I don't have the gear on but I'm just kind of like this and I'm looking for a seat, trying to find something. And one of the security at WWE goes, Hey, 
everybody, it's Sign Guy. Look, hey, Big Show, look who's here. And I'm like, oh, my God. And Show goes, well, why don't you just sit right here, Sign Guy? Sit right next to me. Come on, I got a seat right for you, buddy. I'm like, no, thank you, sir. He's, oh, it's sir now. Oh, okay. And I'm like, good God, get me off this flight. So I'm, I'm hiding in like two rows uh, in the front. He shows over here and I'm over here. And during the middle of the flight, he gets up to go to the, get something out of the top of the storage area. And I'm like, oh, here we go. He goes, hey, coming to the show tomorrow? Like, yes, sir. He goes, good. It'd be good to see you. Then. Goes and sits down. He is awesome. He, he's an extremely nice guy. So I love the ones who just, they get it. They get the joke. I'm not there to offend anybody. I'm there to have fun. Except when it's like, you know, JBL. I'm, I'm there to offend. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why and none, of, <laughs> none of the signs you made about me were funny. None were funny. One was good. I think one was good. And it was uh, WrestleMania. And I think it was WrestleMania 22, Chicago, I want to say. And I had a, a, a big sign. And on one side, it had a pack of beef jerky. And the other side, it had your face. And it said, beef jerky, beefy jerk. That's not that's funny. funny. I love that side. Thank Do you. you still have that? I mean, that's all. Awesome. I don't. I don't have that. What, not, a, crea that, that, what a creative guy. I mean, there's <laughs> no humor in that. Josh, it's, you got to look at it the right way, though. You're looking at it too personal. It's not, it's not even creative. It's not. It's funny. genius. No, it's, it's not. I, I agree with our guest, Rick. Rick, uh, you know, did John ever try to get physical with you or threaten you in any way, <laughs> shape, or form? uh well he actually did just recently uh this is i did yeah he pushed me up uh, at uh wrestlecon yeah uh this, then, uh, this is while he, he, he he's a uh, he's john he's not jbl oh no it was me Rick. that was me okay. yeah yeah he, he doesn't know the difference between jbl and john it's all <laughs> you know those psychos yeah. so as soon as i walk into uh what wrestlecon uh this what was it this year i don't even remember yeah this he pulls me up against the wall and goes, you're going on our show. So I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then he goes and sits down at his booth where there's no line. And he's right next to Trish and Lita who have this line out the door. So him and Virgil have about the same drawing. <laughs> they, they had Ron Simmons in like another room, like a half a mile away. And they separate us and they put me by Trish and Lita. So there's like... <laughs> <laughs> no one but sign guy knows i'm there right <laughs> it, it was fun we talked about how great and, and i will point out the sign guy actually pointed it out to all the fans look <laughs> at jbl he's got no fans <laughs> christian Lee has everybody i can't leave that moment and, and I, I said at that point i reiterate the fact i hate you <laughs> <laughs> well good night folks well see you later <laughs> so you do five or six shows in a row how do you get out of work are you driving back and forth to work what how are you doing that no uh, are you employed <laughs> very yeah yeah employed. are you employed <laughs> yes yes and they're very lenient i get my i can get my job done on do computer. they know we they, they they know it's your your other life is rick the sign guy wwe sure yeah they they were very they understood my passion and uh what i love to do and of course it, it wasn't all the time but it was maybe i don't know uh, or at that time it was about 40, 50 shows a year, um, which is, wow. it's a lot, but good Lord. I mean, you guys, how, how many have you done? 300 in a year or something crazy? We lose count. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever made a sign about somebody at work? Like I hate this woman and just put a sign on an arrow or something. No, there it's, uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea, uh, <laughs> wrestling, I guess. So, but I have actually, uh, taken my signs beyond uh, the wrestling realm and brought it to other avenues like concerts. You were, you were invited up on the say at a concert. Correct. Uh, I was, concert. I was brought up uh, at a couple of them, but there, there was one time where uh, there's an artist, his name's Lenny Kravitz. And he has a very we, we've attractive... heard of Lenny Kravitz. You don't have to explain this stuff to us, okay? We've heard of Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> if you have some like new person that's like just out there, we don't know who that is. Uh, Lenny Kravitz is old like us. 
Even I know who Lenny Kravitz is. <laughs> so it was at this Bing Crosby concert. And <laughs> yeah, we were probably there too. Okay. All right. So she has this uh, pretty attractive drummer. And uh, my friend and I are big Aerosmith fans. And we kind of followed Aerosmith while they were in Texas to three different shows. So the first show in Houston, I'm drumming along, looking at her going, I love you. You are awesome. Yeah. Drumming. Second night, like in San Antonio, I love you. You are awesome. Yeah. Third night, I said, you know what? I'm going to bring a sign. So I was wearing some jeans. I rolled it up under my jeans, had it in there. And uh, her name was, was Cindy. And so she's drumming. I'm doing, I love you. Lenny Kravitz stops the show and goes, you know what? The last three nights, this guy's been hitting on my drummer. Let me tell you something, man. And then I pull out the sign and it says, Cindy left her drumsticks on my nightstand. <laughs> and so Lenny's going, and let me tell you, Oh, Lord. It just stops the show. Cindy gets from the drum riser, comes over, gives me two drumsticks, and the show went on. So it's <laughs> signs work, man. It was fun. <laughs> so the, as far as like WrestleMania, like WrestleMania, the big events now, do mm -hmm. they, does WWE ever reach out to you? Or No, uh, I would love it. If they did, but no, they've sometimes. Now that I'm they, back, they won't. Uh, what's that? <laughs> now that I'm back with WWE, they won't. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for the, the pull. I was there. trying to get a name. I was going to get them fired. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, um, wait, I got a name for you. Uh, damn it. I'll think of it in a minute. But uh, <laughs> sometimes they, they've asked me to maybe uh, say a word or two for a DVD. Uh, uh, one time they had this biggest fan contest held in New York uh, where they had uh, everybody send in videos of why they're the biggest fan. And they called me and they said, you know about this promotion we're doing? I go, heck yeah, I'm putting together a video right now. Said, no, no, we want you to host. Wait, wait a minute, Rick. I got to jump in there. They called yeah. you. So you're on that list that WWE has a fan telephone number on hand. That means uh, yeah, that's not a good thing, Rick. Oh, <laughs> Am I on the blacklist or something? Is that if they got your telephone number, you're on several lists. Oh, well, they, I mean, they wanted me to host this thing. Uh, well, a co host with, with the great Jonathan Coachman. So, uh, yeah, go, go what? ahead. With that. What the great uh, Jonathan Coachman? <laughs> I've heard a lot of ads Jonathan, Coachman, Coachman, Jonathan Coachman. That's never one I've heard of. That's part of his name, the great Jonathan Coachman. <laughs> Nicest guy ever. The opposite of John. So cool. Great. I was at his How wedding. How did they get your number? I don't know. I, Come on. I don't know. You got to have some idea how they got your number. I'm sure it, back then it was maybe MySpace. Maybe they reached out to me. Nowadays it's Twitter or Facebook, whatever. I, they got a hold of me. I don't know. But, yeah, it was it was an honor to, to go there and and. They had uh, Stone Cold, Batista, and Cena as the judges for these videos and everything. And so, yeah. So every once in a while, they'll they'll reach out to me for for something or other. But I can't. What was your What was your video they showed that day? Was it harassing I, John? They didn't want me to enter. They didn't uh, want you in there. Wow. Yeah, they just wanted me to to host and and be a part of it. So I'm like, heck yeah, I'll I'll do it. Yeah. Put me up in a hotel, in New York, sure. So have they, you? They, 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 have you kept your best signs? Do you have like a, a catalog of signs that you kept? You know, I, I did. I had uh, a closet full of them um, for the longest time. And then you know how it is. Uh, maybe if you're moving or one day you're just looking going, why am I keeping these things? So I did, I kind of just dispose of them. And I think I might have some, I don't know, in a closet somewhere that I, I might have kept just for no you reason. never cataloged uh, each sign or anything like that no you? no nothing no. nothing like that you throw all that away of course yeah that's good yeah that's, that's when, good. he and, tried he tried to burn them but the pollution people came along and said uh, he could could put that up and smoke <laughs> well just just like the email he, he sent me not long ago it went right to junk so it, you know it <laughs> makes sense junk yeah, and yeah well you, yeah your reply was was was, was priceless too are you the one like that came up with jbl just a born loser now do you think that's good no i don't 
Well, I don't either. I don't think I came up with that then. <laughs> I did uh, once make a, a sign of your face, and it was a, an activating toilet where your hat was a lit, the lid. So I remember that. I remember that, and I don't think it was funny. I was my, I remember back at the gorilla position. Everybody was laughing their ass off. So of my <laughs> senior, really good. My senior year in college, my coach uh, Bob Shipley uh, te- called me or left a message or something. Said, "Hey, won't you cut your hair?" He was half ribbon. I didn't know that because uh, I'd gotten in trouble a little bit. I'd wrestled a bear and I'd gotten a little bit of trouble in college. So I cut my hair off, and I was so mad about it because I had really long hair. That when I went to take my seat, that's when you had that mullet down there, right? That's right. That's right. No, no, it's a bi level cut. It was not a mullet. <laughs> bi level cut. So when I went to take my senior picture, my buddy had these wire rim glasses. I never wore glasses, they weren't mine. So I grabbed the glasses and put them <gasps> on and for my senior picture because I was mad at the college. Well, to get me back, I think to get me back, they used that picture for the homecoming annual <laughs> for, <laughs> for football. Yeah, so Rick, 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 you gotta find that picture. I no, no, no. I, I made a sign it. of it. Rick found it. He made a sign of it. He found that picture. And the funny yeah. part was, is that picture. The history of it was, I took that picture because I was mad. I was trying to ruin the picture, and ACU used it ever since. And oh. Rick found it and put on there. Once a nerd, always a nerd. Was yeah. was the sign, <laughs> which I didn't find funny. Oh right, right. And uh, being from Sweetwater. You know, which is famous for, I think, the rattlesnakes. I, I think before he went announcing, I, I said, hey, John, I got something from Sweetwater. And I threw this rubber snake at him. And <laughs> I was hoping he didn't think it was real or anything. Start stepping on it, you know. It's not funny. Okay. I, I thought it was funny. I, Rick, was there ever a time when, when, when the reaction of, of, of one of the talents scared the hell out of you and, and made you, why am I doing this? Well, that was... Uh, that was Mark Henry, and there was another time, and it was actually uh, on Raw. Um, and you might be able to see this on on YouTube. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, it, it was uh, after WrestleMania in Hollywood. Batista just won uh, the world title against uh, Triple H, and Triple H to start the show came out to to bitch and moan and yell, and he decided then to go out in the crowd, and I'm just yelling at him you big loser and you suck and blah 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 came up nose to nose with me and said i'm gonna take this title and shove it down your throat and i was just like this and camera guys were like check his pants check his pants and i went up to pee later he's like was that real i go oh yeah 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 (laughs) scared the crap out of me but there was actually another time which was really fun. It was actually here, American Airlines Center in Dallas, where I, I snuck in. I don't know how I got them in. 50 edge suck signs. And it took me a while to make now, them. What, why I, did you have to sneak them in? Was that the time where they, they just wouldn't let you bring signs in? Oh, no. You could bring signs in, but who's going to bring in 50? And I, I'm i always worried about I I snuck a lot of stuff in for for – like a, a stuffed rooster rooster for Vince that says Vince likes me, you know, stuff. I can't believe I got that in. Pinata once for Jericho, sexy pinata. But anyway, 50 of these edge suck signs somehow got them in. I started passing them out all around the, the ring, all around the front row. And I said, everybody, hold them down till he comes out. This is definitely on YouTube. You just put edge ed sucks, I guess, WWE. And, uh, he comes out, his reaction was so priceless. It's uh, and looking around, going, I can't believe this. Oh, what the? And I think JBL was commentating during that too. Because, uh, yeah, he was. He was commentating. And he blamed it on Cole or someone for, for, for bringing out the signs or something like that. But, yeah, check that out. It was good. It worked. <laughs> the best sign story I've got was not sign guy, but it was a, a, a young girl in uh, – in Northern Ireland and I'm tag teaming with Kurt Angle and I go out wow. there and, and she had a creative sign, not like the ones you made. It was funny. <laughs> but anyway, as I go to the ring, I grab the sign from her and I go in the ring, but before I can do anything, Kurt Angle's music hits. So Kurt comes to the ring. It's like this, she's like a little bit, he's like five or six years old. So Kurt oh, comes God. to the ring and, and he gets there. He goes, what is that? I go, 
man, some asshole made this sign about me. And Kurt goes, should I rip it up? I go, yeah. So Kurt oh. rips it up. <laughs> the little girl starts crying. <laughs> so, so, so Kurt looks at me, he goes, did you get that from that little girl? And I said, you're the one that ripped it up. <laughs> so I got the whole crowd booing me and my own tag team partner Kurt Angle calling me an asshole goes you're an asshole you're just a bad guy he goes that's not funny it's a but you're a bad guy god that you, you know you see that a lot too with uh uh the NXT Izzy when uh she actually got something taken off her by uh Mercedes and she started crying and then there's videos of other kids started crying I think it's an honor to get your sign taken away, the, the, the dad should go. Kid, look that! Wow, that, that's it's it's a it's it's great. But these poor kids, they don't know, and they just start crying. But it's did you start an association of sign people around the world? Of signing people around the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you head of that sign, sign people? That people that hold up signs around the world, all WWE. Is that part of your club? Do you have a club that you're president of? No, I, I'm not a part of any club or anything like that. I do have a staff of writers uh, who come yeah. up with ideas. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, then there's the, the sign guy army. All and right. uh, just like JBL, it's my well, mom. Where, where do you get those? Are pro wrestling tees or where? No, uh, it was actually. You, you, uh, you should contact them and have some t shirts made up. I don't think Kiss would be too happy about the logo i mean <laughs> but you no know, my uh, stepbrother and sister uh like uh, made this for me actually it, it's my stepbrother's brother bug designed this and uh, gave it to me i've been wearing it ever since uh but uh yeah i don't i don't think i could sell them i think gene would be pretty mad at me i'm not sure though do you have like other fans that are super fans for lack of a better term that you keep up with Oh yeah, like um, well, there's Frank the Clown, there's Brock <laughs> Lesnar guy, there's the uh, they all have names. There's uh, World's Greatest, uh, um, uh, World's Greatest Fan. Uh, geez, there's there's a bunch of them out there that still go. Uh, Kevin Tucker. I mean, we all have a blast out there. At most of the shows, the, I'd say 95 percent of the shows that I've been to, I always go with my friend Scott, and Scott kind of has. The old JBL hair, it's kind of long and stuff. So um, uh, it's uh, when he, he always goes with me. And, and at one point I was dating a girl, brought her to a show. And I think it was in Abilene or somewhere. I uh, got there kind of late, brought her in. And JBL comes over and goes, you're with a girl? <laughs> so and there are a lot, are there a lot of big uh, groups of JBL fans out there also, I would imagine. So, Mr. Briscoe, it, uh, are you still <laughs> doing, like, some auto work, or do you have the body shop? No, uh, the, the the fans got in the way. The big group of fans that I have uh, that follow me around from, from shop to shop. You know, I, I do consulting at, at different places. but uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, I got an engine that's going, Rah! can you yeah. fix that? Yeah, that that sounds familiar to the one that John had when he when his truck his thirty thousand dollar motor blew up at Taco Bell at, at uh, Sweet, <laughs> downtown Sweetwater in front of his homecoming queen when he was being honored. No, it does. <laughs> no, you're you're getting this story all wrong. Right, he's wearing the yeah. glasses. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My truck had a little bit of problem. I was, I was, <laughs> I was going to a show in Tyler, Texas, and I just fixed up my truck. But I hadn't fixed up the motor yet. Now, this was before I fixed up the motor. Hermes Sadler gave me, a, not gave me, well, he basically gave it to me. Yes, he did. So pretty much gave me a motor from that he had built for me. I paid for parts and stuff, but not enough really to cover the cost of the motor. Hermes did me a huge favor. But before Hermes did me the favor, I had fixed up this truck, my high school truck. It had 278,000 miles on it. Wood bed, all clear coat finish, chrome wheels, everything. But the motor wasn't any good. So I drive over to Tyler to show the boys. Tony Gurria wanted to see my truck. As I pull into Taco Bell to get something to drink, about a half a mile from the show, my truck overheats and breaks down. So I've got, I've got, I've got to walk to the show. What? How far is that? So I'm walking by all the fans with my bag because my truck. <laughs> <didn't work. laughs> Boy, and nobody tried to pick you up. Boy, imagine that. <laughs> 
And Mr. Briscoe thinks that's thinks that's funny. That's great. And I broke down in front of all the fans <laughs> and had to walk to the show. Anybody heckle y'all on the way or you think? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> A heel walking into the show with a truck broken down. No, nobody heckled me. Oh, good. <laughs> do, do you do do do? When when guys when the guys see the sign and their reaction is kind of what what what's that mean there? Do, do, do other fans come up with you? And, hey, man, Rick, way to go, Rick! You really got him tonight, or anything like that? Yeah, uh, the, yeah. Every once in a while, I, I get that. But what I like is since it's. You know, WWE, there's there's more and more guys coming and they keep bringing in more and more guys and girls. And I love the reaction of maybe holding up a creative side of someone going, what the, who the hell's that and why? And then someone, who knows, yeah, that's just sign guy. He's fine. He, you know, <laughs> don't worry about it. And that's that from happened, the local hospital around here. Yeah. And that happened, uh, I guess, a few months ago. Uh, uh, during a house show, uh, Ms. TV was doing his, his bit and, um, he brought out, uh, uh, a town down. Um, I'm having a brain fart. That's terrible. Come on. He won money in the bank. <laughs> you are older. Good God. What year? It would just happen a couple months ago. I am having a what is wrong with me? Aaron Austin it, Theory. Austin Theory. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Is it too early to stop drinking? No. You are asking uh, me and Mr. Briscoe if you need yeah. to stop drinking. <laughs> Austin Theory. So I guess you I guess you become pretty good friends with a lot of WWE security guys. And... Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> Try try to at least yeah, just yeah. to uh then the new they're, ones they're great guys by the way too oh yeah. my goodness they're all good they're, guys. They're, did, did any of them dislike you <sighs> did any of them like you uh okay uh, no. <laughs> uh, all right you 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 want me to name drop some people name There's drop one name, name drop that despises me he must be the smart one. <laughs> Whenever we're at TV, pay-per-view, whatever, he comes and gets me. Jimmy Kelly. Steve Rubin. Steve Rubin. <laughs> He's not security. Hell, if you can't beat Steve Rubin up, you can't beat anybody. <laughs> Steve Rubin's like, give me the signs. Let's see him. That sucks. That sucks. That sucks. <laughs> hey, that's okay. That sucks. That sucks. That sucks. So... <laughs> Yeah. So Steve, Steve is the uh, censor for WWE. He, he took, yes. He, he's there to find me and uh, all the <laughs> bell ringer, producer, floor guy, whatever. They're all on headsets. And as soon as I walk in, they're like, he's here. He's here. <laughs> it's Steve. It's Steve. Swarm, swarm. It's how, dang it. So usually level crazy. five, is, level five. Is yeah. Steve nice to you when he does it? No. Never been nice. I'm as nice as can be. How's the family? You're looking good. You're losing weight. What's going? Hey, he's in great shape. He does CrossFit now. He's he's like he's oh. like here to see him, Jerry. He's got huge arms. He's uh, he's really good shape. Well, Steve's uh, a great guy, by the way. Well, Steve's too. a wonderful guy. And now that I found out that they didn't like you, he's like one of he's my favorite there. guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Steve Rubin right now is like at the top of the. He's up there with Ron Simmons and Gerald Briscoe. <laughs> yeah. Well. You guys can have your fun, whatever. He, he can't stand me it, when he comes how, how does Ron, how does Ron Simmons treat you? Does, does he treat you like John, or does I, I haven't does met the hell out uh, of you when he looks at you? Ron. I don't think I've ever met him. Did you, 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 you ever? Are there certain guys that you will not insult? Uh, Bubba Ray Dudley doesn't like me, <laughs> so I'll leave him Mark. alone. Yeah. Uh, so, so you leave, you, you leave the, you I leave told you oh, Kevin Owens hates me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I do you, write, do you do, still do signs about him or what? Uh, usually positive one now to try to get on his good side. Yeah. Good, his good side. And yeah. But uh, so why did you always put negative ones about me? 
well, to get this you're reaction, easy. just you're like easy. that. You're easy, that's why. <laughs> you know? I don't know. But I actually have uh, a bunch of questions prepared. Uh, so whenever you're ready to do those, I will rattle them off. I'm ready. Are they for me or Mr. Briscoe or who? Uh, pretty much for you. Um, <laughs> okay. Who okayed the APA always pounding ass shirt? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> That's actually a really good question. If we caught we caught more flack on that shirt. When we saw it, Ron goes, "That's great." <laughs> I said, "Leave it as it is." Oh yeah, we saw it and let it go through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we thought it was funny. I don't know who approved it on on the corporate side, uh, but oh, so you don't have any say of? No, no, we do. But we 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 we, we but thought it's like oh. We understood all the double entendre of it. We under, okay. we thought it, we thought it was funny and let it go. Okay, okay. Now, are you you do from what I understand get a percentage from like merchandise, probably a small one, right? Right. Yeah, the username and not likeness. That's generally the the theory that you get. Okay. To, uh, Would you percentage. still be getting money for that from that shirt? Oh, I don't know because it's, oh. it's when they send us a breakdown uh, of like all your stuff, it's sometimes okay. it's, it's like twelve or thirteen pages, and so it might oh, be wow. like one, okay. one or two little items where you get, you know, who knows, a dollar or fifty, you know, who knows. Got it. Okay. Every amount is listed somewhere. Okay. Uh, being a, a, a guru in investments is WWE a good investment? Yeah, absolutely. The, the the all the TV contracts and everything they have that they've got a way to, to monetize so many different things because live live content is at a premium right now in in the television in the I say television in the content world. Okay, being an investment expert, what do you have to show for it? <laughs> I see well, it. I, I see an unmade book. an unmade bed back there. I'm uh, friends with I Mr. Briscoe. Yeah, but I own this hotel. Oh, okay. I don't see any butlers. I, you know, I'm overlooking uh, the practice facility of the Dallas Cowboys right now. So Jerry and I are very tight. So you're the same age. I'm in the. <laughs> are, are your are your questions going to be? You got in, in your yes, they get better. Okay. What fascinates me about being a, a commentator is how do you commentate when you got 10 people 10 different people in your ear you don't you know what i mean that's overblown completely overblown it, really michael cole might have uh because he's been around so long he, he can have 10 people in his ear and somebody texting him at the same time and he handles every bit of it e every single bit of it. i've seen michael cole handle more traffic than that would blow a person's head up a normal commentator and you're it, not it, getting it, that it, same Noise. He, he will have he will have the producer in his ear. He will have people in the, in the grill position in his ear. He will have people texting him all about the show, and he will be talking while he's answering all this or writing this down, talking about the match that he's calling. Michael Cole, what he does out there is ridiculous. I've I've sat there and watched him. He, he's I, I don't know how. As far as as far awesome. as the color commentator, we don't have a lot of people in our ear. Uh, we'll have a couple people in our ear and. Vince, if you're asking about, was always very succinct in what he would say. Very short sentences. He was actually, I thought, an excellent producer because you knew exactly where he was going because sometimes he kept things to himself that might come up later or come up two or three weeks later, and you'd say something that was prescient based upon what was going to happen that you didn't know about. So Vince, Vince in your ear, I thought, was always was very good. Michael Cole is the one that has to deal with all the traffic, and it is insane the amount of traffic that he has to deal with and as calm as he can be doing it. Yeah, He's I, Michael's the best. Michael's the best play-by-play uh, -play guy I've ever seen. Wow. Okay. Uh, do you miss coaching? A hundred percent. Why don't you stick with it? Why don't you stick? Why don't you stick with it? Because as a football player, I was a good wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> well, I loved coaching, and I, I thought I needed to get into wrestling while I was still young enough to maybe make a living at it. That's why I always thought I'd go back to coaching. Uh, football and I, I just never did because I was I never dreamed I'd be in wrestling this long that's one of the reasons I like working with kids now is because I enjoy coaching I enjoy working with you know young young people uh, 
to me, it's, yeah. uh, it's very enjoyable. I thought so. I thought you'd be a pretty good coach. And my, my follow-up is, do you miss coach? <laughs> <laughs> coach was a lot of fun. We covered that. Or, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And this is this is something I just I, I how mean, did this whole interview turn into your show? Because people want to know, and I, I just <laughs> jotted this down 15 minutes before we got on, and so I'm the, okay, all right, all right, all right, go ahead. All right, last one. F. Mary Kill. Do you know F. Okay. Mary Kill? F. Mary Kill. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But that I won't was, answer if it's I won't answer if it's uh, divas because I'm not. Or I say divas, women in WWE because I'm not going to say something about colleagues. Fine. Well, forget it. All right. <laughs> May Young, but no, I'm sorry. No. All right. That's all I got. Are you yeah. sure? Yes. You know, we met. So can we have the show back now, Rick? <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Handing the ball off. There you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Every once in a while, we lose control like this, you know. As, uh, <laughs> that's right. We well, like I to have I if would I say, I would say Michael Cole, and this is honestly how you you would you would hear it. You'd have somebody in his ear say, "Okay, Michael, we're going to skip fifty six. We're going to go to fifty seven. You got to do fifty eight live. We're going to do fifty nine after the break, and we'll do sixty as an on camera." All of that's just changed. And Michael, at the same time, is calling a match, and he's got to be able to do that. That's why you ha you've seen so few play by play guys in the history of this business. I mean, you've seen, you saw JR for years. You saw Cole for years. The mm -hmm. other guys, a lot of them have come, come and gone. Yeah. Um, it, it's like hard. It's hard doing live TV that changes. Whereas like say football doesn't change. A boxing match doesn't change. Like you have a knockout or something happens in a fight or somebody gets disqualified or a fight goes long, longer than you think it's going to, or shorter than you think it's going to. That doesn't change the fact that the next boxing match is coming up in wrestling. Things change. You yeah. can have, you, because you go from one thing to the next. Uh, all your pre -tape, all your pre tapes coming up for that match might need to be moved over to the next segment and everything. So you're completely re rearranging segments sometimes on the fly. And it don't yeah. happen. I mean, like John said, you know, all that noise in your ear, that, that's highly overrated. I, I sit there yeah. grill for, I don't know how many years. I heard all the communications. And, and like uh, like JBL said, Vince, when Vince gets on there, he it's four or five words and it's right to the point and you know exactly what he means to say. Wow. There's no cussing anybody out there. There's no getting on anybody. You got you to gotta keep everybody alert. And if you're, if you're downgrading everybody, they're going to be depressed. They're going to come across during the commentary. And so uh, they got, they got like uh, Kevin Dunn, guys like Kevin from the truck in their ear. They got me from the grill in there. They got Vince in their ear. And that, that's basically it. All the other static is going to the referees or to the security at ringside yeah. or, or, or other people there. So, so it, it's a complicated job. And then and, uh, how, <laughs> how Mike, how Michael and some of some guys just take it wrong because they've never had their feelings hurt, you know, and, mm -hmm. And so yeah. um, if your feelings get hurt on live TV. I'm sorry. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. No matter where you, who you are or where you're at. You know, it's, so. it's fascinating to see in between the commercial breaks, uh, you know, maybe some script changes, them coming in with different colored pages and uh, going, and then some makeup every once in a while. And, you know, uh, change the changing of the mat uh, here and there. Uh, one of my favorite things that I wanted to ask John this was uh, this this raw this past Halloween, um, and I, I don't know why they do this. And please tell me during this commercial break. Oh, here's here's uh, John Brad's JBL. Yeah, ding 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 ding, and he comes out. Let's go to break. Boom. He has to stand there in the ring, in a dark ring, while they're running promos on the Titan Tron, and he's got to stand there for five minutes uncomfortably. Just get, and I see him. He's going over his lines. He's and I'm there yelling my ass off. <laughs> Don't screw I it up, Jamie. I, was I like, heard you. I was ignoring you. Could you hear me? Yes, I could hear you. I was ignoring yeah. you because I thought we can hear you all the way in the back. <laughs> I thought if I, I looked at, I thought if I looked at you, it's going to embolden you. Yes. So, no, I'm not going to. Yes. I'm not going to acknowledge it. God, I was asking my friend, "Can you hear me?" Like right as it goes, it's silent. I'm like, ah, blah blah blah. <laughs> it's, but I, I, that's a spot that sucks being i've been in it a bunch of times especially recently it's just promotion you know they, they want to promote what's coming on the other side of the commercials so they send one person out and unfortunately you got to stay out there some guys will go back 
I don't care if I, I don't care about going back. I just soon stay out there. You know, some I mean, guys actually go back and then, like, say, as soon as they go to break, they'll go back and then ten seconds before they come back, we'll come back out. I just I've always thought. Uh, I mean, why why not have them come out after the break? Instead it's of promotion, it's promotion for what's coming on after the break. Oh, oh, oh! It'll it'll you keep finish, you, you finish a, You finish a match, and you want okay. to say Roman Reigns is going to be after the thing. So you show Roman Reigns entrance. Okay. And then you come back up, and Roman's in the ring. You know, in TV yeah. time, that's you know two seconds. In real time, that's five minutes. It's a long time to be out there. It seems like a break. It. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Fortunately, they turn off they turn off the lights and play something on the Tron. Yeah. And surprisingly, most people just forget about you, except you yelling at me. <laughs> That's my favorite. I love it. So, I, I, know, I, think, I know, I know. When we get asked this question, Rick, it, it, it's hard to answer, and I, I would imagine it's hard to answer. Who is your favorite all-time wrestler? And, and the response that who who who's given you some of the greatest responses from your side? And, and, uh, and you, don't, you don't have to say me. We, you know, that's. I know, I know JBL's at the top of the list, but let, let, let's just ignore that he's in the room now and, and be honest with me. Is uh, I had a sign for him once that said, JBL's here, hooray for the mute button. Well, can we mute him right now? So, <laughs> we do it all the time. <laughs> uh, it, I, I've been asked that uh, question quite a bit, and I'll, I'll have to go back to, to being uh, in Gahan, Ohio, watching the, the Superstation and seeing – this obnoxious, loudmouth, larger than life guy who I totally wanted to, to be opposite of growing up, Ric Flair. Uh, just over the top. Just look what I got. Look, look, look what you have. You know, I'm, of course, JBL's inspired by Ric Flair, but uh, I, I'd love to get it in with, with him, and I have. Uh, for a number of shows telling you, know, you get your suits from JC Penny. That's a nice dollar store watch you got there. And he has to come over and show me it's designer and let me know and tell me to shut up. And uh, this... hey, have you touched on his baggy pants recently? Uh, oh, JB Hills. <laughs> yeah. What happened there? Did, did you forget yours and, and had to go those, get those, some? Or? Those were 330 pound uh, JBL clothes, but now he's 185. And he, uh, I have, I have pants that fit. I don't wear skinny jeans cause I'm an adult. <laughs> it's simple. So you meant to do that? I have pants. He's a, that he's a fashion icon. Haven't you seen GQ with his picture in there and all these pictures? All That's these right. movie stars now are copying JBL's style. We're all they copying all me. Magic pants off. Pants Weren't, that fit. Weren't there a bunch of signs the next Monday about your baggy pants? I think I saw some. Until I explained to them that snowflakes wear tight jeans and men uh, wear baggy <laughs> pants. And they're not baggy pants. They're pants that fit. I have a large ass. I got more ass than a donkey farm. All right. Yeah. Coach, <laughs> told, Coach told me to haul ass and take four trips. Okay. <laughs> And Stand I'm not going to put 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound sack. So I put my 10 pounds of potatoes in a 10 pound sack. That's my pants, baggy pants to you. But it's not because it's not skinny jeans. Cause I'm an adult. Is this a Dockers commercial we're watching or what? <laughs> no, it's a fact about pants. I happen to know all about them. <laughs> he likes skinny pants in other words. <laughs> hey, Rick, 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 we're, we're not, we're, you're doing, you're, do you frequent other promotion wrestling matches and do the same thing over there? Uh, do, yeah, do from time to time. Who, what? Do they hate you too? <laughs> no, I am so well respected. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh, let's see, Impact Wrestling was just here. Uh, not too long ago, uh, for shooting for two nights, I brought a few signs there. And what, what I think of what's great about uh, other promotions is you get old WWE guys, yeah. you know, that have, have traveled from here and there. And it's great to see, you know, I, I, I was yelling at uh, uh, Mia Yim uh, before she came back to WWE. She was working for Impact. And I, you know, text Shelton. I go, oh, you got a little something for me for Mia? And he's like, yes, do this. And so... <laughs> sometimes I get sign ideas going, going that route. So that, that's kind of fun, but uh, yeah, it's good to see uh, uh, different uh, independent promotions as well. I mean, there's local promotions everywhere uh, across the country that have just some phenomenal 
uh, phenomenal wrestlers and, and entertainment. And uh, uh, remind, speaking of which, remind me at the end when we're done, I, I want to uh, promote something, if I may, uh, about a local pre- wrestling promotion that ran some some bad luck. So, uh, no, I, I, I still go. I, uh, AEW is, is coming here pretty soon. Um, I'll, I'll attend that and see, you know, friends like Jericho. I'll hold up maybe a sign or two. You know, Jericho, thanks for not singing tonight. Stuff like that. So, yeah. That's still good. Good. I don't know why a promotion wouldn't have you come. I mean, you know, like you're such a fixture on WWE. I don't know why a promotion that's running that's trying to make it and appear that they are part of the major leagues, and I'm not picking on any promotions out there, an independent promotion, whatever, wouldn't have you come and sit front row and, and do your signs. Uh, well, okay. You said you have editing. Um. <laughs> Uh, actually, with with the WWE, I, I've been front row for you know countless shows, and I get moved. Uh, I, I would sit front row on cam, um, uh, ready to go with my signs, and Steve Rubin would come over. Let's go, and we would go to what is called the penalty box, which is uh, the last two seats front row uh, off cam. Uh, kind of closest to the, the bell ringer, that area. So we go to the penalty box, still have a blast. I mean, I'd yell and be obnoxious, and, you know, about all the, the talent and, and stuff like that. Be fun. No signs allowed there because once you hold it up, blocks the view uh, of the hard cam. So, I mean, for, I don't know, eight eight to 10 years, it, I've been, uh, you know, moved over there, uh, which is fine, uh, which I, I don't have any beef about, but I, I don't know. It, I took a guess on who didn't want me there. So for this past Halloween, I dressed up as the person that I think didn't didn't want me there. And I, I kind of I sent you that picture. He's a certain person that works at a truck. Yeah, and that's, like, and that's like making fun of Vince to me and Jerry because he, he's a right. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but right. I can under I can understand his point of view. Right. Sure. He has no idea what you're going to hold up. Uh, I, I've gotten those checked, but uh, you know, as of late, and there's another thing too is what what I kind of understand is I don't want to take away from the show it, itself. I I want to sure I, I love the interaction with the talent. That'd be funny if they laugh or don't laugh at a sign and all that stuff. And at house shows, it's free for all. It's it's awesome. But I understand during television we got a show to do and you know it's this 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 and i don't want to disrupt anybody by holding up a sign during something or other so 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 you pretty well know when the commercials are coming on and 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 all that so when 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 to hold up your sign and when the show's coming on back from commercial break you know that you know they're going to be a pan so you get your signs up yeah How, how do you rick get all those front row seats it's it it was expensive very expensive. I mean, it, uh, back in the day, it was just as soon as it went on sale, jump on there, uh, eBay, StubHub, whatever, uh, try to go for it. Front row seats are very difficult to, to get to a WWE. Tell me about it. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why I, I, I'm not going to 40 or 50 a, a year. Now it's, you know, just kind of sprinkled in here and there. And these major pay-per-views, forget about it. It's Those are thousands and thousands of dollars. So. I'll stick to house shows. Love it. Yeah, house shows are so much fun. Too. They they are, and in, in a in a wrestler's point of view, though, are they like, oh man, we're in Tyler or we're in BF? We're in. If you're in Tech, if you're in Texas, yes, they do say, oh, we're in Tyler. <laughs> but if if you're in if you're in a, if you're in Oklahoma, oh man, we're in Oklahoma. We're, <laughs> we're in Charleston. What a great city, you know. But. Yeah, they do say if we're in Tyler, yeah. Oh, man, why, <laughs> what, what did I do to get here? <laughs> Tyler's great, man. Thank you. Thank you. Tyler's great. It is. I worked at KG Tyler Rose. Earl Campbell's years. from Tyler. Earl Campbell. Earl That's Earl right. Campbell. Rose City or whatever. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Rose Capital. Not the Rose City. Rose Capital. Hey. The Tyler do the people, Rose. Do, do, the people, do the people at the buildings know who you are? The people at the, like, 
uh, uh, building management. Uh, like, yes. when you go, did, 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 can you go like to the box office? Hey, Rick, how you doing? Hey, well, they're coming back in, in a month, two months from now. Can I get get my name on the list? Uh, usually the local security knows uh, just going to so many things and wearing the same dumb outfit that they huh. they say, okay, he's he's okay. I'll, Do you have more get, than one outfit? Do you have more than one blue shirt and one runner cap? No, I, I'm like Einstein where he had, <laughs> yeah. you know, the same shirt and pants. It, it's around the same thing. That's as, the uh, only way you're like Einstein. <laughs> so geniuses you know we we just we don't have to choose we're this is a, a fashion statement that's really homeless taken people don't either <clears throat> you know one time my my brother-in-law asked me how do you come up with your brilliant ideas and uh, you know what do you do when it just hits you you know when god just throws that idea in there i pretty much just write it down on any piece of paper that i see and all now that you're sleep you're sleeping at three o'clock in the morning all of a sudden i did do you wake up and do you write that down heck yeah i keep a pad right by the bed <laughs> wow. scribble it down he goes you're kind of like john Lennon. That, that's yeah. dedication man that's dedication john you know you told me he, he did he was just uh, one of these bummed off the street we're learning so much about you uh Rick oh Lee. it's yeah, these gifts are gold, you know, these ideas. So, you know, I put them in my phone or anywhere I, I, I can. Write it on some toilet do, paper. Do, do, fans, do fans come up to you and give you give you suggestions? Hey, hey I heard this about John or anything. Some... <laughs> no, any fans out there who have any dirt on John, let me know. Uh, I will include that in the next time. He's pretty much all over the internet. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to look far. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. You don't look, yeah. That's what I wanted to ask you too. Is I I never thought you, you being a manager, and I should have. I go, what a great fit. I mean, is this something that you've thought of or planned, or did they come to you and say, "Hey, will you be a manager?" Or no, I, I no, I they called me and said, "Hey, we want you to do something uh, with Baron in Oklahoma," and I didn't know if it was a one off. I don't know if they did either. I mean, it, it all came as a surprise, hundred percent surprise. I'm very, I'm very glad it did. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun, but no, it was not something where I, I was wanting. Hey, I want to be a manager. I, I didn't know any of it was coming. Baron and I, Baron and I were decent friends, I think pretty good friends. Yeah, but, but it just kind of came out of the blue. Yeah, that's good stuff. And I, I, not to get too personal, but do they? Do, do you have to sign a contract for a certain amount of time, or are they just kind of? Uh, I don't know. A one, three off, four off. They just kind of keep calling me. Keep calling <laughs> so I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Little, literally, I told Jerry before we started going in, I said, I don't know if I'm working next Monday or not. I have no idea. Right. And they called me on you know Thursday, usually after creative, and said, we need you Monday, or I go back. Okay. It's, it's all been a we're, surprise. Sometimes wasn't... we're talking about the show, and I said, John, are you going to be available next Tuesday? Well, I don't know. Where am I? I got to tell him where he's at. You know? right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Man. No, I, it, it's, it's been, actually been wonderful. It really has, because I, I had no idea I was going back to do anything. And I don't even know if I'm going back a bunch more times or not. I mean, they just kind of call me when they want me. And yeah. And in the week. And I'm I'm disappointed that it's just TV because I was thinking, oh my God, though the house shows will be just <laughs> phenomenal fun. I mean, I, I got to make at least six signs. I mean, I would actually well, I would enjoy doing uh, the the live events because that would that was always the most fun because you got so much free reign with the promos and your matches and yeah. I really enjoyed live events. Right. Oh, damn it. Oh, well. Yeah, before when you were asking about Tyler, Texas, guys really enjoy the house shows. You know, it's it's like the fans enjoy the house shows a little bit a little bit more because it's so so much more continuity to it. It just flows, you know, so much easier. And it's not all drug out. And the guys enjoy it because it gives you time to get into a ring and kind of go over stuff that that you need to go over and kind of kind of kind of work on your spots and everything. So it 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 it, it house shows are, to me are, are the greatest fan experience and also great for the for the talent too. I just thought you know because travel is just got to be a beating, yeah. and you go to this little podunk town in in Idaho uh, would just be a beating itself. But I know that the shows it looks like everybody uh, I'm talking about the talent ha is is having a good time, and I, I was actually brought backstage a few times to 
some house shows and, and just found it pretty cool that I guess they have a, a camera uh, set up to where there's guys in the back watching these live events. You know, these are non-televised, but right. you got a camera set up and they're, oh, so they're we, we record everything. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and Tyler, as a matter of fact, when, when Kane uh, still wasn't speaking and had the mask and all that kind of stuff, I didn't know he could speak. And he came up to me <laughs> and whispered in my ear before he went back. He goes, hey, turn your signs around to the camera. We can't see him from back here. So I have to <laughs> do that before the... <laughs> I'm like, wow, cool. So you're doing that just for the mayor of Knoxville. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, one time after... I... <laughs> after a, a TV show or whatever, he was driving a car and he almost tried to hit me. And I went over to the passenger side. I said, can I get a ride in my car? He's like, yeah, get on in. Grabbed it and he went, and, you know, took off. And he's when nice. he pulled up to a building with Paul Bearer, you know, Kane was huge kayfabe. He'd wear a ski mask and mask. He, you never saw him without his mask. Really? Wow. So when he pulled up with, up with Paul Barry, a lot of times he'd have his towel over his head, you know, because he couldn't wear a ski mask driving down the highway. Somebody had, somebody had called the cops on you. So he'd pull up and Paul Barry would roll down the window and yell to the fans, look, Kane can drive. Kane can drive. <laughs> <laughs> it would make Glenn so mad. <laughs> God. I don't know. So so Rick, uh, what what are you doing now, and what what calls did you, what, How can the guys follow you and and and, and keep up with what you're doing? What 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 message do you want to get out to the fans today? Well, uh, there we were talking about independent um, wrestling promotions. There's actually one in Sherman, Texas, uh, at the Elks Lodge, and I think from from Dallas, it's a, it's about 45 minutes away. Uh, about once or twice a month, they have a promotion. It's great. And sometimes they bring in, you know, the good brothers or, uh, geez, Carlito, uh, just, uh, it's, it's, it, it's a great promotion. And, um, uh, Robert who runs it actually had a trailer full of, uh, uh, the, the ring, uh, everything used at the Elks Lodge for a show, as well as tons and tons and tons of, uh, wrapped gifts for underprivileged kids trailer was stolen uh so they're yeah it's it's just terrible i mean it, 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 from his words it's yeah losing the ring stuff's one thing but geez he lost like fifty thousand dollars worth of with toys and everything for for these kids so uh if anybody wants to if they go to texoma pro uh at yahoo.com they can get in touch with uh robert and maybe ask how you can help and uh, hopefully, you know, help us promotion, help these kids. Great. Awesome. Yep. Well, Rick, thank you so much for coming on. I, I still think your signs about me were, were not clever, uh, funny, or I thought they were stupid. Well, but... it's a work in progress, I guess, after 20 some years. So I'll keep trying. And whenever you get to get around to learning to read and having a sense of humor, you'd let me know. Well, Rick, thank you. You know, you know, you 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 signed your artwork to me, and guys like Layfield from Texas, you know, <laughs> you know, they don't appreciate fine artwork like most See, of us. Artists appreciate artists. Exactly. Mm -hmm.